Samoa Joe and his protege Jay Lethal hit the ring on the rock parlors. You alright? What? I can't deal with this. Jay! Jay Lethal here. I'm here to talk to all you Ring of Honor fans about something that's very important to me. And that's the start of a wrestler's career. It's very key, but I must admit that my start here in Ring of Honor, I'm a bit ashamed of. You all know what I'm talking about. That's my Special K history. It's not something that I'm proud of, you know. But I did learn a few lessons, but the lessons haven't ended there. It took the world champion, Samoa Joe, for to get me out of Special K, to show me the light, you know. He showed me many things. Samoa Joe, he showed me plenty of in-ring abilities, things that I never would have known if it wasn't for him, and also how to carry myself outside of the ring, you know. It goes a lot beyond just what I can do in the ring or with my abilities, but how I can present myself, and he taught me all of that. Samoa Joe, he became somebody I could count on. He became my family. And every match, you know, my family is always out there hollering and screaming, but he became someone that even, you know, sometimes you can't even trust your family. It's not about trust. It's, he became the person I could count on, pretty much. I could call him. He helped me with my feud with the Rockwallers. Joe, it's hard to explain. He was a person that I could call on. And then in 2005, I did a lot of things on my own. I captured the pure title. I defeated Loki. Loki, grueling matches I had with Loki. He made me bleed. I've never, I've never been able to wipe the sweat and see it mixed with blood on my hands. I also in 2005 defended the pure title successfully against people like Spanky, a great talent. But then, that was that day in New York where Joe, you won in my pure title. Manhattan Mayhem, Joe, yes. You challenged me for my title, my pure title, what I worked so hard to get. And you beat me for it, you know? And it's, it's something that I just can't forget. And after everything I've done this year, on my own, as I've told you, everywhere I go, I still hear that word protege. Hey, Jay, how, how's you and uh, Samoa Joe? Are you, you still is it's, it's, protege? I keep hearing it. I keep hearing it. Joe, don't get me wrong. To be Samoa Joe's protege, I'm pretty sure people would give their left arm. But there comes a time when a man has to stand alone. And I'm asking you, when do I step out of your shadow? And December 3rd, Manhattan, Joe, just the same place where you beat me for the pure title that I worked so hard for, I'm challenging you. One on one, man to man, friend to friend, competitor to competitor, I'm challenging you. And this time, just like I'm gonna do right now, I promise I'll step out of your shadow once and for all. This is something that I need to do. Hello everybody, Jim Cornette here, the Commissioner for Ring of Honor Wrestling, and thanks for joining us on this uh, home release for Ring of Honor. It's a tremendous night tonight, a long-awaited match, a culmination of a very violent, very bitter rivalry. It's going to be Generation Next against the Embassy in Steel Cage Warfare. We're going to be hearing from some of the participants uh, ongoing through the program tonight. We're glad you joined us. But I want to address a couple of topics before we get to the, the matches. First and foremost, Nigel McGinnis, who is not here tonight. He is actually on tour defending the 
ROH Pure title uh, for Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan, and Claudio Castagnoli, who is also on tour in Mexico. But Nigel McGinnis seemed like he wanted to take it upon himself to make me look foolish in Detroit last month after I'd come out and said as commissioner there were going to be winners and losers, there were going to be deserving champions. I go back in the back and I'm in, in a meeting in the locker room for about 10 minutes. When I come out, I find out that Nigel McGinnis has not only produced a foreign object in the pure title match with Claudio, but he caused Claudio to get disqualified for it. So Nigel likes to go around saying he's the, the epitome of the European mat wrestling style and he is the true deserving pure wrestling champion in Ring of Honor. Well, McGinnis, you're going to get a chance to prove it because I don't like to be uh, made stupid and Claudio wants a rematch. So whenever I can get you two guys in the same place at the same time, there's going to be a rematch for the pure title, Nigel McGinnis and Claudio Castagnoli, and for the first time in Ring of Honor history, there's going to be two referees, one on the inside of the ring, one on the outside of the ring, just to keep an eye on Nigel McGinnis. And one other thing, tonight of course all of us are excited, the legendary rivalry in Ring of Honor has been reignited, Homicide takes on Steve Carino. Now this, uh, this feud goes back to 2002 and we're excited to see it settled, but I want to send a message out to not only Homicide's thugs, but also a good friend of Steve Carino's named Colt Cabana who has no love for Homicide. If any of you, if any of you deprive the fans of seeing a one-on-one -on -one matchup between Homicide and Carino, if any of you show your faces in that match, I guarantee you there's going to be some heavy fines laid out. Well, folks, that's it from the Commissioner's Office. Without further ado, let's go to the opening contest here for Ring of Honor. December 3rd, 2005, Ring of Honor is here at a new venue in Manhattan, New York. Basketball City sees Steel Cage Warfare here tonight. Dave Prezak joined at this time by Jimmy Bauer. Tag team action to get things kicked off. We have Dunn and Marcos, the Ring Crew Express, against the new duo here in ROH at Jason Blade and Kid Mikazi from the New England area. A very important match for Blade and Mikazi. This is their third effort here in ROH. They've lost the first two. They need a victory here to get future bookings. And they've shown some great teamwork in their first two outings here in Ring of Honor. Uh, let's see if they can actually earn a victory here against a very established team in the Ring Crew Express. Nice drop to hold right there from Marcos. He turns it into a pitting attempt, but only two. Look at the power right here, shown by Jason Blay. This opening match is a rematch of the opening match from the last ROH show, a night of tribute in Long Island. Nice drop kick right to the mud. And he tags his partner, Dunn. And, and I noticed Lenny Leonard gets a little stomach virus and Luke Kuze comes begging the, they call him begging to come back. And as long as you stay away from the alcohol tonight, Jimmy Bauer, maybe you will last the entire event. Lenny Leonard getting a hold of some bad sushi over in the Soho area. There's always Mark Nolte waiting in the wings. Nice roll up right there. Oh, only gets two. Nice arm drag right there from Doug holding onto the arm. Keeping him right in the center of the ring. A very good recovery earlier from Dunn. He slipped out of there, but still managed to get a roll up on Jason Blade, and now he's controlling the match, grabbing the arm. Holding onto the wrist lock now on Jason Blade. And shoot him off the ropes. Off he comes, stuck in the clothesline attempt. Line tag right there. Kid Mikaze in. Double Japanese arm drag. Cover. Only gets two, though. Dunn feeling the effects. We want to thank the fans. We're here in Basketball City because we needed a larger building here in Manhattan. 
the New Yorker Hotel, a great atmosphere. It's right down the street here from Basketball City, but hey, you fans demanded it, so we had to move into this larger building. A very nice facility. In fact, this is where the New York Knicks practice. Which the midsection by Kim Mikazi kicks away the knee, brings him down to one knee. And a spinning kick, stepping up on the knee as well. Mikazi with the cover. Didn't have the shoulders flush against the canvas and not hooking that leg immediately on going for the cover. Could have cost him. Good job from referee Mike Keener right there. Makes am the I, am I back for good now? Is I Lenny don't know. We'll have to see uh, if Lenny Leonard is able to recover. Well, that must have been some really bad sushi. Here we see some double team work from the New England duo. Stepping up on the back of his own partner, connects with the knee strike. Um, they only get two out of it. We see some great teamwork, some great double teams uh, in the first outings from Blade Mikazi. See if they can actually put a combination to use to earn a victory. These two standouts come from the New England area, and they have looked impressive, but it's all about victories, and that's what they need here. Jason Blade brings himself back in the ring with the senton right across the chest of Dunn. Cover. Only gets two. Of course, anyone who saw the Joe versus Kobashi event at the New Yorker Hotel, we had fans packed wall to wall, barely any room around the ring for the wrestlers to even get inside. So yes, we did need a larger facility, we have it here in Manhattan. Jason Blade charges right into the elbow from Dunn in the corner, elevates him, spike busted. Blade and Mikazi know what's on the line in this one as we get a cover. No, able to get his shoulder up at two and a half. Dunn and Marcos, a mainstay here in the on, ROH tag go, team scene. Of course, winning that feud against the Carnage crew earlier in the year. Can they keep the momentum going here against Blade and Mikazi and keep their win streak against Blade and Mikazi going? Jason Blade plants Dunn with the body slam. Mikazi going up top, some more teamwork. Both members of the team now all the way up top. They're taking a lot of time, and Marcos saves his partner. Well, that'll break up the move. Yeah, just dump him to the floor. See if the Ring Crew Express can mount some offense of their own as they've got both of their opponents down on the floor. Wayne McCarthy are going for some higher risk and they paid the price and what's this? Could be setting up for the stage dive. As Blade McCarthy worked their way back to their feet on the floor, it's Dunn and Marcos that comes soaring. And take both men out. Right down to the hardwood floor here at Basketball City. The high risk did not pay off for the newcomers, but it did pay off for the ROH veterans. Pitches Mikazi back inside the ring. Dunn going for the cover here. No, looking to follow up, grabbing hold of the head, bringing him into the corner of the Ring Crew Express as Marcos tagged back in. And this really is do or die time for Mikazi or Blade. They are fighting for future bookings here. It doesn't get much more important than that. Marcos, as him, looked like he was going for a DDT, turns it into a Northern Lights suplex. Nicely done by Marcos. Able to uh, counter the leverage attempt on right there and get the Northern Lights. Makes the tag. Done the legal man once again. Now we're going to see some teamwork from the Ring Crew Express. Step over by Mikazi off the ropes. Double leapfrogs. And back body drop. Simple and effective. Cover. And he gets two. Jason Blade trying to uh, regain his bearings on the apron. Yeah, he definitely looks a little shaken up in there, and that, that's not good news for Mikazi, who's gotten worked over inside the ring. Face full of turnbuckle and a chop right across the chest, courtesy of Dunn. And again, makes the tag, Marcos the legal man. And he's gonna dish out some chops of his own. Frequent tags on the side of the ring for Express. Tag teams pass. And they're doing a very effective job cutting off the ring, but Dunn then playing. doing an effective job of turning his back on his opponent and paying the price. They're playing to the crowd there. Now it's Mikazi lighting up the chest of Dunn, going for the leapfrog himself, and he gets caught right into the Death Valley driver. Absolutely devastating cover. Jason Blade dives in to make the save. And that's saving future bookings for him. He'll be saving a permanent roster spot here in Ring of Honor. That's now done very wisely. Pulls the man into his own corner as Marcos tagged in once again. And a double team maneuver coming up from Marine Crew Express. Move to the midsection, kick to the side of the head, super kick, and now elevates him. Balconero. Only two, broken up once again by Jason Blade. Blade feeling that his partner could not kick out, making the save. And more great teamwork here from Donna Marcos, quick tags. 
Well, they saw what Blade Mikazi brought to the table last time. Maybe a little bit more prepared and uh, not willing to give them the opportunity to go for any of their own double team maneuvers. Some very innovative maneuvers that we've seen out of Blade Mikazi thus far. They definitely aren't afraid to take some risks. Up and over, staying on his feet, but gets caught with the Enzigiri and a vicious Larry. Cover. Oh, so close right there. This time Mikazi manages to kick out. Gotta hand it to Mikazi. That right there would put away a lesser man. Seated version of an abdominal stretch right in the center of the ring, trying to wear the man down as his partner Jason Blade encourages Akazi to stay in this matchup. Trying to fight his way back to his feet while Marcos tries to hold on. Shots to the midsection. Get Akazi forward for Dunn and gets met with a fall. That was a, Marcos. a very smart move there from Akazi taking out Dunn. So now it's just one on one with Marcos. This is his opportunity to make the tag. Mikazi sent to the ropes, tagged by Jason Blade. Mikazi wipes out Dunn on the floor, and Jason Blade with the flying crossbody. Oh, only two, says Mike Keener, only two. And there's the wreckage out on the other side of the ring. But Jason Blade and Marcos, the legal man. I think he was going for that Falcon Arrow again, but he gets planted this time. New Thunder powerbomb, only two. And this is Blade and Mikazi's opportunity. Can they do it? Can they earn future bookings? Jason Blade looking to follow up. Warm shot for Marcos. Sets him off the ropes. Or for maybe a head scissors. No double team as the knees of Kid Mikazi driven right to the chest. Only two. Dunn dives in to save his partner. Here in the midsection, Mikazi shot to the floor. Jason Blade back to his feet. That's underneath the attempt. A gory bomb from Don. Didn't quite get that all the way though, but still Marcos with the cover. Oh, two and three quarters. Got that shoulder up just before the referee could count three. And it looks like the Ring Crew Express might be looking to finish off Jason Blade right here. Assisted slice bread number two, and they get it. Very worn down, can't follow up with immediate cover. Now he's gonna go up. He's calling for the set on. This is how they won the match in Long Island. On the shoulders of his partner. Marcos with the set on, but Mikazi moved Blade out of the way. Move to the midsection. Dunn sent to the floor. Hard. Jason Blade looking to follow up right now as he's got Marcos up on his shoulders. Uh, they can feel it. They know victory's within reach. Plants him with the Finley roll. Mikazi now climbing up top. Shooting star press urged them to victory. What an upset. You know, when I first got in this business, a wise man told me if you want to be successful, you have to know when to separate business and personal matters. You see, and that's what I've done. You see, when Generation Next formed, it was a business decision. It's what had to be done to make my way to the top. You see, but somewhere along the line, Alex Shelley, things became personal. Somewhere along the line, Prince Nana, things became personal. I'm not exactly sure where. I'm not exactly sure why. You know, I think maybe there's something to it, Prince Nana, that for your whole life, you haven't had to work for a thing. Everything's been handed to you on a silver platter. And I think on the insides, that just gets me a little bit. And you've been hiding behind your money and your power and the people you can hire to do your dirty work. But you see, tonight in Steel Cage Warfare, that's all going to come to an end. Because we're all going to be entrapped in that cage with nowhere to go, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And dues will be paid. And at the end of the night, when all the dust settles, you're going to see Generation Next staking its claim as a top faction in ROH. Can you believe it? Huh? Generation Next. The day has finally come for Prince Nana to put you in your grave, huh? To finish off where we left off. Generation Next, New York City, Steel Cage Warfare, the game stops here. You're going to see blood. You're going to see everything you thought you didn't see. And the embassy will once again prove 
why we are the top faction in professional wrestling. So if you think what happened to Jade Chung, her head being bashed in on the concrete was funny, <laughs> wait till you see what happens tonight. Generation Next, <laughs> time to move on my friends because the takeover begins in New York. You fools. It's time to see who the top graduate is from the ROH Wrestling School. We got Davey Andrews, the top of the class trophy holder, against Kelly Primo. And the strength, the power, and the experience advantage lies in the favor of Davey Andrews here. And it looks like Primo, right off the bat, is going to try to use his quickness to battle that power. And it's not working, Dave. Referee Mike Mondews with a two cap right there. We've seen Pelly Primo give it his best shot thus far in his ROH outings. And hasn't really come up on the winning end of things just yet. And right there, a vicious lariat from Davey Andrews. That could be it right there. Nope, he kicks out. And you mentioned that, that he's been having some effort so far in the ring. Not quite successful, but he has been gaining valuable experience. And that is what you will get at the ROH Wrestling School. You will get valuable experience. Of course, the head trainer is Austin Aries. You will learn the right way. You'll also learn backstage at ROH shows. You'll learn from some of the best. I mean, the students from the ROH Wrestling School have been in the ring with some great, great athletes. I mean, Mick Foley, AJ Styles, Whoa! Josh Daniels, and Whoa! look at Kelly. Oh, you gotta hand it to Kelly Primo. He was going forearm for forearm with Davey Andrews, a much stronger man. It shows just how much fight this kid has in him, despite his size. Well, Austin Aries has to be proud of that kind of effort. Kelly Primo was trained partially by CM Punk and partially by Austin Aries. Release German suplex by Andrews. Looking to follow up now. Andrews is just dominating here. Powerbomb. Turns him right over and this could be it right here. Referee checking on the condition of Primo. And that's it. Davey Andrews retains the top of the class trophy against Kelly Primo.
embassy, and especially you, Jimmy Rave. From taking out Jade Chung to what you did to me last show, what you don't understand is you have only made things worse. So tonight, 12-3, Basketball City, Steel Cage Warfare. I'm gonna chop you until your chest bleeds. I'm gonna give you backbreakers until you cannot walk anymore. And Jimmy Rave, I'm gonna pound your face in until your face is broken in pieces. So tonight, Jimmy Rave, it's over. You know, I hear all this talk coming from Generation Next about how they're gonna destroy the embassy. If you don't remember, I'm the one that beat AJ Styles. I'm the one who sent CM Punk packing. And tonight here in Manhattan, on December the 3rd, I cement my legacy here in Ring of Honor by taking Generation Next out once and for all. that kept him on the sidelines, teaming with his partner Sal Renard to put the belts on the line against Colt Cabana and his selected partner tonight, Milano Collection 18. Basically, Renard and Mamalouk putting out an open contract similar to what they took from BJ Whitmer and Timmy Jacobs to win the tag titles. The open contract was answered by Colt Cabana and he chose Milano Collection AT as his partner, saying that you need a little bit of Italian influence to go against Renaro Mamo. Yes, Milano Collection AT, an Italian supermodel, also a very experienced wrestler, international competitor, uh, frequently competes in Japan as well as Mexico, and has been competing this year uh, very much in the United States as well, adding that uh, to his resume. And Milano is now a part of ROH. He has signed for a number of upcoming shows all the way into 2006, so you can expect to see him be a mainstay here in Ring of Honor. Right now it's Sal Renaro and Colt Cabana jockeying for position right here as Cabana with the head scissors on Renaro, keeping him grounded. Referee Todd Sinclair, your senior official here in ROH, has signed this match. Renaro and Mamaluke sending out that open contract to Commissioner Jim Cornette saying, hey, it was good for us last time in Manhattan, let's try it again. Trying to escape the head scissors and he does is right into a side headlock. Does Sal Renaro, has Cabana's shoulders down for a near fall as Cabana works his way back up to a knee. Mamaluke and Renaro have looked good in their early defenses, particularly two against BJ Whitmer and Jimmy Jacobs while the match where they won the belts at Joe versus Kobashi, and then the rematch at Enter the Dragon. 
Uh, they've lost some momentum, though, due to Mamaluk being out with that concussion that he suffered when he banked heads with homicide back in Buffalo at the Buffalo Stampede. Near fall right there for Cabana once again. Goes right back to his standing position. Cabana knows straight into the ROH Tag Team titles, having held them on two occasions alongside CM Punk. All run elbow tie up. Cabana shoots him off the ropes. Goes for the sunset. Flip does Renaro. Cabana rolls through, grabs hold of the leg, twisting away on the ankle. Renaro and Mamaluke really coming out of nowhere to win those tag belts, establishing themselves in a hurry here in ROH. Here we go. Tony Mamaluke uh, didn't want to return to Ring of Honor and just be another member of the roster. He was after gold right away and took advantage of the open contract for the tag team titles and paid off for it. They're an impromptu tag team that night, the first time they ever teamed up. It'll be interesting to see if Cabana and Milano can do the same tonight, the first time they team up. Trying to keep uh, Sal Renaro's body down on the canvas. And right now he's tying him up. He's not able to keep his shoulders down. He's going to wear him down, try to get a submission. Nicely done by Cole Cabana. And it's real nice to see Cabana actually doing some wrestling after being involved in those brawls against Homicide. That feud absolutely going over the line, absolutely vicious. Jim Cornette has warned Cabana, though, to stay out of Ho Homicide Carino later on tonight. We want to see Homicide Carino one-on-one, -on -one, and Jim Cornette said if there is any interference in that match, there will be heavy fines. And you'll notice that uh, Cabana basically just going hold for hold, out wrestling uh, Sal Renato on that exchange, back to his feet. We haven't seen any clowning around from Cabana in this match so far. He's not uh, having good times and great memories in that ring. Uh, he's a much more serious competitor, and it's almost like a new dimension uh, that I'm seeing out of Cole Cabana. I've known this guy for a long time. He always has fun, but he's gotten much more serious. The whole homicide's been getting into his head. I guess you can put it that way. Uh, the, the homicide feud has definitely brought out a vicious side of Cole Cabana, and right now it's a lot of collection AT bringing out a vicious side of Tony Mamaluke. Mamaluke wants in against the Italian supermodel. Gonna watch out for that dog at ringside as well. Milano tagged in. Well, what, what's up with that? He's adorable. I don't get it. Shove. Face to face they come. They're gonna hook him up. Hook him up. Is Bill Watts here? <laughs> it's a big shooting series with Jim Cornette. Side headlock by Milano Collection ET. Just holding on to it. Mamaluke trying to send him off the ropes, and he does. Shoulder tackle. Down goes Mamaluke. We are seeing two excellent technical wrestlers squaring off right here. Nice hip toss. But Milano kicks Mamaluke down to the canvas. Side headlock takeover. Right into a head scissors. Both men back to their feet. Renaro tagged in. I don't know if for, I don't know. Milano he, did see the tag. <laughs> he realized it. He's very quick. Very quick on his feet. And now it looks like he's got both members of the team's legs. Double crap. Todd Sinclair calling for a break. The fans here man had and eaten it up. A lot of collection AT brings these fans to their feet. Looking very impressive here. Reversal the Irish whip, Milano sent off. And Renaro gets the arm drag. Hip toss of his own. And a drop kick to follow up. Cover! Oh, Milano able to kick out. Thus far, Milano's been uh, very impressive here in ROH. Uh, hard fought battle against Samoa Joe, survival of the fittest. He definitely impressed in that one and earned his stripes. Back body drop from Milano. He scored his first ROH victory against Claudio Castagnoli at the last show. Really showing uh, his technical prowess to the Ring of Honor fans that might not be familiar with his international work. As right now, he's trying to use the ropes to his advantage by tying up Sal Renaro, the Paradise Lock. And we have some innovation in addition to that technical skill. Mahmoud now trying to untie his partner, and he's stuck. There's one way to free him from that position, and I think it's going to take... It's going to take uh, a little bit of a drop kick, possibly, as Milano gets some speed and connects with the kick. And now he's free. He's helping him out. Milano definitely winning over this NYC crowd. You notice, though, Cabana still has not cracked a smile. 
normally you might see Cabana fixing this here and making a joke out of it or something, but I mean, so, something's definitely changed in Cabana. The Thomasine feud has definitely changed Cabana. Makes the tag, in comes Cabana. There's now Milano and Cabana. Double teaming Sal Renaro. Off the ropes he comes, shot to the midsection. Milano off the ropes. Big boot right to the jaw. Into a pinning combination. Oh, way too close to the ropes though. Some nice teamwork out of the new duel of Cabana and Milano. They definitely have some chemistry going together. Can you imagine if we see another upset of Manhattan for the tag title? Wouldn't surprise me. Nice uppercut from Cabana. Follows it up with a second. Renaro slumped into the ropes. Scoops him up. Eye slam. Cabana hits the ropes. And drops down right on the jaw. Drops the elbow across the chest. Very focused here tonight is Cabana. Well, it is good to see that he is focused on this match and not worried about homicide. And it's like, uh, we do have a language barrier between Cook Cabana and Milano Collection E.T. because Cabana doesn't speak Italian. Well, you notice that uh, they weren't going to accept the fake tag there, so they made a legit tag, and you got to respect that. Bring him away on the arm. And what are they doing here? Tying him up once again. Ow! Stretching Salonaro. The worst thing is, even if he did give it up right now, Tony Mamaluk has the attention of the referee, and well, I guess you could say he just saved his partner right there, but he was the victim of a whole lot of punishment. More great chemistry out of the new duo, Milano and Cabana. Salonaro trying to make the tag now. Mamaluk urging him on. Double axe handle down across the back from Milano as Cabana. Picks Renaro up off the canvas. Get him into the buckle. Milano hits the turnbuckle as Sal Renaro makes the tag. Using his agility there. Nice flying head scissors from Tony Mamaluk. Hit toss on Cabana. Pulling him back to a standing position. Grabs hold of the arm. Reversing the Irish whip. Off the ropes. Kicks away at the leg. Nice roll up from Mamaluk. Oh, only an air fall. Pulls him up once again. Again, only two. Takes out the legs of Milano. Pulling press. Again, only two. Horse call right here. See if Milano can reach the ropes. You see the pain on Milano's face. Cabana either needs to break this up, or Milano needs to get to those ropes in a hurry. Trying to inch his way toward the rope to force a break of the hold. And look at that, Mamluk stepping over. No, not enough to prevent Milano from hitting the rope. And he tried to get his, his leg uh, to prevent the arm of Milano from being able to grasp the bottom rope, but he was uh, relentless, was able to do it. In comes Sal Renaro once again. Pulling Milano into the center of the ring. Going to work on that leg. Nice follow-up by Renaro on that grab there with the horse collar by Mama Luke. Looks Staying like on that leg. He's going to focus on the leg of Milano. He is the tallest man in this matchup. If he does, he's not able to stay on his feet, the height uh, disadvantage for the team of Mama Luke and Renaro would not come into play. As now, we're seeing some submission innovation from Sal Renaro himself. He's got the legs tied up as well as the head. And this one is causing pain to the neck and the leg of Milano. Cabana trying to come in to uh, force a break of his own. And there you see Mamalu getting in a swift kick with the referee having his back turned. Team strategy from the champs. Milano off the ropes, drop to hold. Follows up, dropping the midsection across the knee. The drop kick to the side of the head. They definitely have Milano in trouble. We saw Milano take a lot of abuse from Samoa Joe, though, so we know that he can take some punishment. He's a tough individual. Mamalu just measuring him for these kicks. Well, those kicks are going to test his toughness right there. Trying to get back to his feet and lands the open hand strike to the chest. And now several to the back and the chest as well. Milano reaching for the tag. Cabana, his arm outstretched, and Mamalu 
grabs hold of the leg, pulls him away from Cabana and makes the tag to his partner. Renaro up top. Top rope elbow drop. Beautifully done, and we got a cover. Cabana in to make the save. The champion's in firm control here. The arm from Sal Renaro has Milano backed into the corner. Kicking away at the midsection. Shoot him off the ropes. Spin kick connects. Renaro with the cover once again. Milano able to kick out. Pulls him back to his feet. Another forearm strike from Sal Renaro. Milano collection, ET, into the buckle he goes. Renaro looking for the support of the fans here in Manhattan. Elevated up and over, but landing on the apron. Going for the springboard, but Milano lands the kick and makes the tag to Cabana. Well, Cabana firing away on Sal Renaro. Tony Mamaluk grabs hold of Cabana, who goes after the leg of Mamaluk. Trying to fight off both men all by himself. And Cabana's doing just that. He is in firm control right now. Those tag titles are in his grasp. Just jabbing away at Sal Renaro. Mama look back to his feet. A little bit for both of his opponents. Elbows connect. How long can he fight off two men all by himself? Well, you got your answer there, Dave. And right now, Mama look at Renaro. No, I thought they were in control. Hey, Brana takes down both men. Covered by Cabana, but only gets two. A lot of collection AT trying to uh, regain his senses out on the floor. As through the legs of Cabana goes Sal Renaro, sends him into the ropes. Over top goes Cabana, scoops Renaro. Drops a midsection first over the shoulder, but only gets two. Almost an inverted Colt 45 there. More of the same for Mama Luke, but no, staying on his feet, German suplex with a break. But he's not the legal man. Referee Todd Sinclair right on top of things. Great job from Sinclair. But there's Renaro taking advantage of the situation. Flipping off the ropes, but only gets two. Favoring that midsection. And right now, this match can go anybody's way as Milano just coming into the ring. Sinclair's got to do something about that. It's all breaking down here. Well, he is going after the other non-legal man, Tony Mamaluk. Milano and Mamaluk doing battle. Nice agility shown by Milano Collection AT as he sends Mamaluk down to the canvas. But Renaro connects with the kick. Renaro and Cabana still battling it out. And now more double team strategy from the challengers. Challengers have shown great chemistry throughout the match. They continue here. They plant Renaro. Throws him right into the clutches of Cabana, holding him for the ace crusher. Nicely done, we got a cover. Mamaluk saves the championship. Cabana tagging in Milano. What could he have in mind? Close line takes Mamaluk down. Milano maybe looking to finish off Renaro here to earn tag team championship gold here in Ring of Honor. And that'll make international news if Milano's able to win the tag titles here. The Armani Shoe Exchange. Cover. Mamaluk breaks it up. Tony Mamaluk not taking any chances here. Sidesteps Cabana. Through the ropes into the floor he goes. Milano now with Mamaluk. Going for the suplex. Renaro trying to help his partner here. Double team maneuver. Oh! A great effort from Cabana and Milano, but the champions retain. Who can beat Renaro?
It was about a year ago that I stepped into the ring at Ring of Honor, ready to get my big break. I was a part of a tag team called the Air Devils. And as soon as we had our first victory, and I raised my hand and looked out to the crowd, I got jumped from behind by the embassy. They cut me off before I even got running. Well, you know what I did? I joined up with a group called Generation Next, a group that's had my back and I've had theirs. And together, we're the future of professional wrestling. And tonight, in that steel cage, when we go through the embassy, we're turning a new chapter in Generation Next. We are the future, and tonight, we prove it.
in the hand of the ROH World Champion, Rocky Romero, to challenge for the title here in your next contest. Well, it's a good thing Jimmy, our cameraman, had a shark handy there for Danielson. Saw from the clip just a moment ago some of the history between the Rottweilers and the American Dragon. You could say Rocky Romero is the one that really kick-started the feud between Brian Danielson and the Rottweilers that really settled on Brian Danielson and Homicide that Best of Five series as he was the one, the first one to hit Danielson after that big tag team match where Danielson teamed up with Loki against Samoa Joe and Jason Liger on the Weekend of Thunder in 2004. I'm getting really heated here in the early going in the matchup with those kicks from Rocky Romero. You know, he and his partner, Ricky Reyes, for some of the most vicious kicks that you will find in professional wrestling today. And he's also a very, very skilled scientific wrestler, much like Brian Danielson. And right now, an exchange of kicks between these two competitors while holding on to the Greco Roman knuckles. Now, a headbutt from Greg. Rocky Romero has been competing internationally in recent months. That's why you haven't seen him here at ROH. He cashed this prize for being on the winning team of the Trios tournament and gets this title shot. Of course, every member of the winning team of that tournament got to choose whatever match they wanted. Romero waited until now to pick this title. Holding on to the Greco Roman and Knuckle Lock throughout that exchange and quickly trying to go for the cross arm breaker. Danielson maneuvered his way to the ropes. And Rocky Romero just stomping away on the champ. Romero and Danielson, they are no strangers to each other. We haven't seen them fight here one on one in Ring of Honor yet. This is a match I was very much looking forward to when Danielson was feuding with the Rottweilers. We didn't quite get to it though as Romero had international commitments come up. But these two are scored many times at the New Japan Dojo in LA. And word out of there is that Romero made Danielson tap many, many times there. So Dan Romero is a definite threat to the world title. Maybe the first time they're going one-on-one -on -one here in LA, but they do know each other very well and have been in the ring whether it be in front of a crowd or just sparring at the dojo many times. They know each other so well. Romero, shot from Romero. Romero knows how to tap Danielson, and he's also knocked Danielson out of the dojo, a very real threat to the title. Kicking away at the back. We've seen a mean streak in uh, Brian Danielson in his recent title defenses, notably the ones against Roderick Strong. Let's go, baby. And I don't know if Rocky Romero is doing a very smart thing trying to piss him off. Nice European uppercut. Well, that was a vicious headbutt before by Danielson, and that's what happens when you make him angry. Just that's Roderick Strong. Brian Danielson really coming into his own as ROH World Champion. I mean, I thought he was awesome before, but he is definitely the best wrestler in the world now. I don't know about those tactics right there. He has until five, Jimmy Bauer. Danielson, he's wrestling for himself. He's not listening to corporate America. He's not listening to the fans. To him, the ROH World title means wrestling freedom, and he is wrestling how he wants. Nice back heel kick in the corner. Brings Romero down to his knees. Danielson's the kind of guy, he does not care if you cheer or boo him. However, you know, the fans have been getting on him lately, and when that happens, well, we've really seen a mean streak in Brian Danielson. Yeah, it just makes him even more aggressive with his opponents. It's almost like he feeds off any negativity that the crowd might bring. Grabs hold of the front face lock, and driving the knee down as well. This is Brian Danielson's first appearance for ROH in Manhattan, though. So you can expect the fans to be behind him, especially against an opponent like Rocky Romero. Of course, the trios tournament was last March. Romero waiting until now to cash in on that prize. So maybe he's got something up his sleeve. Maybe he knows something. Maybe that's why he waited until all the way until December to cash in on that prize. Again, going for the cross arm breaker. But Danielson was able to maneuver his leg to the bottom up to force a break. Seems as though Romero's strategy is to go after the arm of Danielson. As he has hold of the head, Danielson forces it into the ropes. Referee Mike Keener asking for a clean break. Slap right across the face from Greg. Oh, what a physical match. Look at those knees. Knee strikes and nice. Got him in the corner and kicking away at the chest of Romero. He's absolutely pummeling him. And we said how hard Romero can kick, Danielson can bring it as well. Absolutely vicious. Julius Smokes 
Anderson and Reyes at ringside tending to their man. And if you look at the chest of Brian Danielson, it is still scarred and bruised from his matches against Roderick Strong. Man. I mean, wow, that's like all you need to know about those matches. Of course, we saw them fight at Vendetta. And, and that was a month ago. And his, his chest is still bruised up from that one. It's for the world title, baby! Looking for the surfboard here. Romero trying to fight it off. He can get He can get him! He not allow Danielson to grab hold of the arms to, to get the hold. But he does. Uh-oh. Look at Danielson. He is just playing around with Rocky Romero right now. He got the leg set up. He's got the arms. And now it's putting pressure on so many body parts. Danielson needs to watch his own shoulders here. Make sure that he doesn't pin himself. Whoa! Staying on his feet. Great agility going after the ankle lock now. Beautifully done by Romero, and Danielson is in trouble. What a counter. He was able to land on his feet as soon as he freed himself from the surfboard. And can Danielson reach the ropes now? Title's on the line. Pulls him to the center of the ring away from the ropes. Dragon trying with all that he's got. Oh, well, he might tap. He's got that out hand up. And he reaches the bottom rope. Romero releases the ankle lock. Danielson, though, immediately clutching that ankle. There's no time. That's how much damage has been done. He was really twisting away on that leg. And now following up with kicks. Romero staying aggressive. The center. Very happy Julie Smokes seeing the challenger in command. Formerly one of the all age tag team champions. Rocky Romero and Ricky Reyes. Reyes also ringside. They had a six month reign with those all age tag team titles. By grabbing hold of the ear of Romero to force him to uh, release that hold. Snap it. That leg. Focusing on that body part, he's going after the arm, and he's really going in the matchup, now he's going after the leg of Gomez. Romero with a definite strategy entering this one. Kicking away on that guy. But Danielson catches the kick this time. There's some payback on Romero's leg. Off the ropes comes the champion, leap frog from Romero. Monkey flip, takes Danielson down. Favoring that leg. On that monkey flip, as he landed, more damage done to his own leg. And a running kick from Romero. You know, you have to wonder, why didn't Romero ask for a world title shot against Austin Aries? Why didn't he ask for one against CM Punk? Why didn't he ask for one against James Gibson? He waited until Brian Danielson was champion to cash in on that prize from the trios tournament last March. Perhaps that has to do with their New Japan Dojo background. The fact that Romero knows that he can tap Danielson or not. Exciting factor, just how well uh, they know each other. They've been in the ring with one another and know each other's skills uh, very well. Romero, he's very confident that he has Danielson's number and he continues to work on that leg. Danielson trying to fight out of that hole, keeping away the head, but Romero again trying to hold of that leg. Romero very focused in this match and now trying to get on top of Danielson and just pounding him. Palm strikes from this position. Danielson trying to cover up. Trying to get the shoulders, but... Boy, well, he rolls through and he comes up with a half grab of his own. A little bit more payback. Going to work on the leg of Romero now. Pulls him into the center of the ring with the half grab. Will Romero give it up here? Grabbing hold of the other leg, trying to. Really pulling Romero. See the pain on Rocky Romero's face as he looks towards the ropes, but Danielson drags him more into the center of the ring. Tying up the legs. <laughs> Giving the fans their money's worth. And you see that. The fans asking for one more, and Danielson not letting them dictate the pace of his match. Danielson wrestles how he wants to. He's not going to answer the fans. He's not going to answer the corporate America. He answers to himself, and that's it. The legs tied up, and again, snapping back. It's like, even if the fans are begging Danielson to do something, he's not going to do it just in spite of them. 
in spite of the fact that he wants to wrestle the way that he will wrestle, and no one's going to tell him how to, how to perform in that way. Romero toward the ropes, again, pulled it into the center and snapping the leg of the challenger down to the canvas. This ain't welfare. This ain't no world shot deal. This is for the world title. Some encouragements from Judy Smokes on the floor. More damage done to the knee of Romero. And they see Reyes and Smokes. And right there, Danielson not giving Romero any time to confer with his corner man. Danielson breaking that up in a hurry. Uh, now Romero getting a couple of moments to regain himself on the floor. So back to his feet, some water over the head. Encouragement from Ricky Reyes. Romero now trying to pick his spot, coming back in, but Danielson all over him, and very aggressive. Well, but he turns it around on Danielson, and now it's Romero connecting with kicks. He's got Danielson in the corner. Series of kicks right to the chest. What an intense hard hit matchup we've seen. The Orange World title on the line. These two putting in, giving everything they got for that belt. Two very skilled scientific wrestlers. Two very focused individuals as well. And now Romero is just starting to choke the life out of Danielson there in the corner. Fans here supporting Brian Danielson, encouraging him to fight back here as Romero has hold of the hat. They are just happy to see Danielson make its first appearance in Manhattan. Pushes Romero all the way to the other side of the ring. Into the corner they go. Oh, I don't think we're going to see a clean break. What about you, Dave? I don't think so. As they're head to head, jockeying for position. Oh, Paul strikes from the champ. And now going after the feet, <laughs> trying to stop the toes of Rocky Romero. European uppercut from Danielson. Where he came from? What's going on here? And he has Romero rock with that last European uppercut. Romero's eyes are looking for that seat. And Danielson's strikes have proven to be lethal here in our way. Oh, you saw how much kill runner strong and vendetta. And what's this? Could we see a title change right here? A beautiful submission from Rocky Romero working on the arm, but he also might have a one for the choke there. And it's right in the center of the ring, too. Now, if Danielson leaves his feet, which he is right now, he has absolutely no mobility. He is at Rocky Romero's mercy right now, and he is right on the local in the middle of the ring. Danielson's in a world of trouble. Steve Danielson has the strength to try to work his way back to his feet from this position. It doesn't look like it. He could be choked out right now. Mike Keener checking on his condition. One more and we got a new champ. No, no, there's still some fight left in Brian Danielson. We see him power his way back to his feet and try to put it into the corner when James Gibson has done this to him in the past. And he just did it again. Incredible leg strength from Danielson. Using a tactic that he put to use in the matchup where he won the ROH world title, and it saves the title right there. Rocky Romero springboards off the top and connects with the drop kick. Utilizing his aerial skills, we haven't seen that in this match. Tiger suplex, but only two. Oh, it's, it's within a half a second. Rocky Romero is close. He sets this before. He knows when the champion's in trouble. He knows when Brian Danielson has almost had enough. He's felt that before at the New Japan LA Dojo. Danielson faced out on the canvas. That front guillotine choke variation really took a lot of energy out of the champion. Uh, and there's some insulting kicks from Romero, and you do not want to play around with Danielson like that. All it does is make him angry. And he's also wasting time. He needs to stay on the mat. If he wants to walk away from Manhattan, learn the ROH world title. Kicking away at the chest. Open hand strike from Romero. Oh, but Danielson's on his feet, and Danielson trying to avoid Romero now. He rope a dope. Trying to wear Romero out, swinging it. Nothing. Oh, he connects with the palm strike. Oh, that took him down. Oh, he connected big time there. And now blasts him with that kick. Series of palm strikes. Oh, he's got him rocking with that glory. Danielson getting all fired up, getting his second win. Both men going for palm strikes at the same time in the center of the ring. Yeah, but it's Danielson.
Johnson, who's connected. Romero just swinging wildly. He is in trouble. A oh, kick to the leg, though. Slow it down, Danielson. Going back to work on the leg. Danielson's trying to stay on his feet. Well, finally, those kicks bring him down. He's back up. Grabs hold of the arm. Trying to take him down. No. Grabs hold of the leg. Drag it, screw leg whip. Oh, no. Holding on to that leg. That leg has suffered abuse tonight. And look at that. He's twisting that leg off. Half crab applied by Danielson. This could be it. Has Romero had enough? Holding him in half. Cranking back on that half crab. He taps. Ryan Danielson retains the ROH World title. Ryan Danielson continues to look absolutely awesome. Ring of Honor can claim to have the best wrestler in the world as its champion. And that is no exaggeration.
stepping into this ring. But after watching you wrestle tonight, it reminded me why I love this business. It reminded me why I like performing in front of fans that appreciate wrestling. And if I ever decide to give up that last match with Jericho for one more, it'd be with a guy like you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. audacity to put Jack Evans, the man, the myth, the legend, from the heavens in a cage. When I stand on top of that cage, ain't nobody taller than me, ain't no one going higher than me, ain't no one clearing the stratosphere like me. So I don't know why they would do that to the embassy. Because tonight it's going to be total domination. You're putting me in my environment and expecting them to win? Come on now. You do not go and put a pit bull in another pit bull's backyard and expect him to win. Because I have more to prove in this match than just the victory. I'm here to prove that I am a mainstay in ROH who is going to take things to the top with or without a cage. Be expecting it. And you know this, man. One year ago, Austin Aries, one year ago is when this all began, when you usurped my leadership of Generation Next. And what does it come to? A cage? They don't play baseball in a cage. They don't play football in a cage. But by God, we've got to fight in a cage. So I'll tell you what. You bring your diet generation next. You bring your new little group. You bring your watered down version, because it's not the same without me. You bring them into that cage. And you bring them against my embassy. And personal Jesus, tonight, I'm going to make sure, personally, that you are crucified.
special protege versus mentor match right here. Jay Lethal, Samoa Joe's protege, challenging Joe to this match. You saw the promo at the beginning of the tape. Jay Lethal saying he wants to get out of the shadow, Samoa Joe. And we're gonna see the friend versus friend, competitor versus competitor. since May in Manhattan Mayhem to see this match. Of course, there's Samoa Joe defeating Jay Lethal for the pure title at Manhattan Mayhem. And that was one of the uh, most memorable pure title matches uh, in 2005. And uh, it, was, it was a match that really brought the Manhattan fans to their feet. And uh, we're going to see a little bit more out of these two competitors here tonight. As right now, it's Samoa Joe holding onto the wrist lock on his protege. Goes forward. Looks back up to his feet, turns it around on Samoa Joe. He takes off the leg of Jay Lethal, pulling back on the chin line. Lethal trying to fight his way out of it, and he does. Of course, Samoa Joe, the ROH legend, the man who held the ROH title, world title for 21 months. He's the one who made it into a world title. He held the pure title, and he says he has one more goal. He wants to be Grand Slam champion here in Ring of Honor. He wants to win the tag titles alongside Jay Lethal. Now they lost that number one contenders match at a night of tribute, and then we saw the post-show promo, Jay Lethal walking out on Joe, not angry, it seemed like he was more upset with himself, and he took the pinfall loss in this one, and now Lethal challenging Joe, I guess if they're going to have this match, Lethal wants to test himself here against Joe, and then they will get back focused on going after the tag titles. They got some work to do if they want to uh, work back into title contention, so right now it's Samoa Joe trying to stretch the arms of Jay Lethal here. Well, he's teaching him something there, but look at Lethal quickly going into the corner. Worked his way free and feeling out process here. Joe and Lethal together are one of the best tag teams I have ever seen. I mean, all you got to do is look at back, back to basics when they wrestled CM Punk and Spanky. And that match at the last show against Austin Aries and Roderick Strong. Great, great tag team action from these two. I can't wait to see him get back on track and go after those belts. Not, not a better tag team partner for Samoa Joe to have in his quest to become the first Grand Slam title holder here in Ring of Honor than his protege. So Pitty works his way to the ropes to force a break of the third. Well, Joe, I mean, he's really taught Lethal a lot. Uh, you saw that promo at the beginning of this home release, Jay Lethal crediting Samoa Joe for breaking it away from Special K, making him serious. And what a year it has been for Jay Lethal winning that pure title and then defeating Loki finally at Glory by Honor 4 in that brutal fight with that honor that took place twice during that show. It was that encouragement that Samoa Joe gave Jay Lethal, but you saw a lot of potential in Jay Lethal while he was in Special K that really uh, gave him the confidence to get places in professional wrestling, to work his way up the roster, to earn the pure title, and to really have a breakout 2005. Of course, Samoa Joe, a god here in Ring of Honor as Jay Lethal reverses that on him. Nicely done. The last time here in Manhattan, it was Joe versus Kobashi. Five stars, Samoa Joe against Kenna Kobashi. And again, we're at a stalemate here between these two. We'll come back to their feet. That match against Kabashi is, is something that no fan will ever forget. And it's part of the reason that we had to move to the bigger building here at Basketball City, right down the street from the New Yorker Hotel. Looking very cautious here to lock it up once again. Samoa Joe with the side headlock on Jay Lethal. Well, unlike what we saw with Danis and Romero earlier, or what we're going to see coming up next with Torino Homicide, there is no hatred between these two, just respect. And this is going to be a good competitive wrestling match as the action picks up. It's all about Jay Lethal wanting to prove that he's the better competitor of the two on this night. Maybe the protege is going to uh, overtake the teacher, if you will. Ducks out of the way of that kick from Samoa Joe and lands a drop. No! Swatted the drop kick away. I thought that he connected on that, but Samoa Joe just reaching out of harm's way and staying on his feet. Again, they exchange a stare across the ring. And there, again, neither man with a decided advantage in this match. And the crowd showing their support and respect to Jay Lethal. They want to see him give his mentor a run for his money. They circle once again. 
All an elbow tie up between these two. Samoa Joe backs lethal into the corner. See the clean break right here. Let's see if we get one. No, Joe whipping him out of the corner. First line body press off the second from Lethal. Just a one count. Comes holding the arm. Takes him over with the arm drag and holding onto the arm. Lethal wrenching that in there. He knows if he takes away the arm, he takes away the choke. That, of course, is Samoa Joe's most dangerous weapon alongside the muscle buster. So trying to work his way back to his feet while Lethal keeps hold of the arm. This is Joe into the corner. He strikes from Lethal. First of the Irish whip. Lethal to the second row. One for the crossbody again, but Samoa Joe just stepping out of the way. Uh, that's not going to work twice against somebody like Samoa Joe. You got to think Jay Lethal's maybe realizing that right now. Or oh, realizing that with a face full of canvas. As, as it looks like shrugging off Joe and Joe moving with a hard kick. A little bit of tension between these two. Well, I don't know if it's so much tension in that Joe is a competitor and he is all business in that ring. I mean, that's what we saw in Manhattan Mayhem when he fought Lethal for the pure title. If Lethal wants a match, Joe is going to give it to him. Solid chops across the chest in the corner from Samoa Joe. Joe's not going to hold anything back. Then over in the corner goes Lethal. Back foot, lands on his feet. Next with the boot. Brings Samoa Joe down a little bit. And he's got Joe stunned. Let's see if he can follow up. Snapmare brings him down to the canvas. Drop kick to the back of the head. Great impact. Pinpoint accuracy. And they get a one count only. Joe rolling his shoulder up off the canvas. Not allowing his protege to even get a two count in this part of the contest. Almost sending a message there. Standing moonsault. And that time he gets a two count. Perhaps Lethal has Joe a little bit more hurt as you see Joe clutching that sternum area. Lethal in control as he drives the elbow down across the back of Samoa Joe. Goes him back to his feet. Again, working over that back. Headbutt to the lower back. And this is what I like to see in Ring of Honor. Good competitive wrestling. This is the sport of pro wrestling right here. Forearm uppercut, chop combination. Brown J. Lethal off the ropes. Goes through the legs of Samoa Joe. Next to the back heel kick. Lethal out to the apron. Springboard. Drop kick to the back. Sends Samoa Joe through the ropes and to the floor. Takes a risk and it pays off. A big trope and the protege is on top. The mentor is down. He's still gonna kill you. Come on. Has to bring him back inside the ring though. And very wisely, that's what he's doing. Jay Lethal wants to get out from behind the shadows of Ojo, Joe. And another one count only. Jay Lethal wants to be known as his own man, not as a protege of Samoa Joe, and he knows in order to do that, he has to defeat Samoa Joe. Pulls Samoa Joe back to his feet. Has him in the corner. Chop from Lethal. Boy, does he chop hard. Two very powerful wrestlers doing battle in this matchup. And again. Joe staggers his way out of the corner and across the ring. And those chops are definitely having some effect on Samoa Joe. Lethal. The head DDT. Dollar. Two. Four. Another two count this time. Lethal a little slow to follow up though. He's thinking about his strategy here. What's he got to do? Get the victory against Samoa Joe. Another chop. Well, he definitely has Joe Hurt with those chops. He's got the Shin Yamaki locked in and stretching the back of Samoa Joe across his knee as well. Trying to wear the big man down with this hold right here. 
Referee checking on Samoa Joe's condition. I thought he was almost tapping there for a second. I think he's digging down his wings and looking for the support of the fans. That's what he's got right here. Back to his feet, elbowing his way out of here. Breaks free of Lethal's clutch. Forearms from Jay Lethal. Joe holds on to the wrist. Inverted atomic drop off the ropes. And this time Samoa Joe takes Lethal down. Back center. Oh, he nailed him with that cover. Some more aggressiveness out of Samoa Joe right there. Well, I, think it's two. I definitely think that Lethal hurt him with those chops, among other moves. Joe not playing around. Snap man. Chop to the back. Kick to the chest. Samoa Joe off the ropes with the knee. Drives down with it. The big combo from Samoa Joe. Cover. He's able to kick out. The match has turned in the favor of Samoa Joe as now it's him trying to wear Lethal down. As you see, he's got that arm hook immobilizing Jay Lethal there. And right, and he's got those massive arms around the shin, almost in the throat of Jay Lethal, trying to cut off the oxygen. Lethal trying to feed off these fans himself. Back to his feet. Elbows to the midsection of Samoa Joe. Lethal hits the ropes. Running to the knee strike. Oh, did that connect on the chin? That could knock a man out very easily. Well, Lethal grasping his head. And a world of hurt as a result, no matter where it struck. Samoa Joe still in command. Max Lethal into the corner. Combination of strikes from Samoa Joe. Just wearing out Lethal in the corner. Puts him across the ring, into the buckle he goes. Joe comes charging with the knee strike. Another big knee strike into the chin area. And now, trademark Samoa Joe right here. The fans want to see it here in Manhattan. We're face washing the corner, raking the bottom of the boot across the face of Jay Lethal. Oh, oh immediately. Lethal's head is bouncing like a basketball. Oh, he saves himself there and grabs the leg. And what's this? Come on, Jay. Oh. oh, I don't think that had to be out of instinct right there. I don't think Lethal meant to do that. Driving the leg of his mentor across the ring post. Uh, he's able to counter the face wash and get the advantage. And he's going to do it again. No, thinking better of it. This is a match of sportsmanship. It's a now no. Wait, what? What? Jay Lethal just driving that chair into the leg of Samoa Joe. We had a good back and forth matchup. Again, like you said, sportsmanship. What's the point of this? Come on. Jay Lethal showing a mean streak. And, and Lethal looks almost stunned at what he's done. This crowd was enjoying a, a good competitive match for wrestling as a sport. And, and Lethal has ruined that. He made a decision, and I don't quite know why. And look at this, he is staying on that leg of Samoa Joe. Absolutely no mercy here for Jay Lethal. Using the ring post, using that chair. I don't get it, though. Why? Jay Lethal made a choice. He's happy with himself at the end of this night. He's now he's working over that bad leg of Samoa Joe after damage done with a chair. And not listening to the official as well. And right now, Joe just grabbing onto those ropes for dear life. And, and Lethal using those ropes on the leg, the back of the knee. There's the leg tied in the bottom rope. Is Kirk getting behind Samoa Joe? Chop across the chest. Oh, and Lethal cuts him off by going to the leg. And, and I don't. I, 
What's the thought process with Jay Lethal here? I don't even Why think... did he make that choice? Why did he go to work on Samoa Joe, his mentor, with a steel chair? I don't even think Lethal served what he's doing. He's staying on the leg of Samoa Joe. He's trying to get the victory here by any means necessary. Another one count. Off the ropes comes Lethal. Drives the elbow down into that leg. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I mean, Lethal is showing absolutely no mercy here. I guess he wanted that win over Samoa Joe so badly that it didn't matter what he did to get that win. Well, he still has to get it. Well, he thinks that these kinds of tactics are what's going to earn him a victory here. I mean, we saw Jay Lethal do some pretty underhanded stuff as part of special pay, but I thought they left that all behind. We haven't seen that side of him in, in a long, long time. It's Using the ropes for leverage here. Uh, right in front of the referee, too. Lethal doing that just to add extra damage to that leg of Samoa Joe. That was not about winning a match there. Right now, he gets a two count. Just trying to inflict more punishment on the knee. Yeah. Now talking some trash. Tell him to get up. Hey, you're working over the, over the knee with the ring post in the chair. He's just yelling at some old Joe, his mentor. Who's my pure title? Oh, he's talking about the pure title. Maybe, maybe this has been eating away at Lethal since May and Manhattan Mayhem. Well, I gotta say, I'm very disappointed to see this come out of Lethal here. I'm disappointed to see a great match ruined by, by Lethal using the, the steel ring post in a chair. Slap right across the face. Off the ropes he comes. Power slam. Oh, a perfect power slam from Samoa Joe. Can he follow up? No, too much damage has been done to that knee. He couldn't go for the cover right away after the punch of that knee. And Lethal able to kick out. Now let's see if Joe's able to follow up though. Trying to stand despite the damage done to that limb. Oh yeah, suffered a lot of damage. He off the ropes. He was going for that leg, but Joe starts a flip. <laughs> Only gets two. Joe coming up limping. He's, he's, he's got one leg. He's only got one good leg in this one. He can't put any weight on that bad leg as a result of Jay Lethal's offense. Big Lariat! Cover! No! Lethal able to kick out. Uh, as much as I don't want to, I have to give Jay Lethal credit for, for kicking out of that. But we saw against Loki that Jay Lethal could take a lot of punishment. Joe again struggling to stay on his feet here. Just measuring him in the corner for the chop. Uh, Joe is in a lot of pain. Lethal, son of the buckle. Up and over he goes. Right under the shoulders of Samoa Oh, Death Joe. Valley driver! Oh, but he couldn't put any weight on that bad knee. Off the ropes comes Lethal again. Carry to his own. Taking advantage. No, just a two count. It's going to take more than that to defeat Samoa Joe. And what's Lethal doing? Oh, what a feat of strength. Running suplex on the big man. And he usually likes to follow up with that double headbutt to lead into the dragon suplex. Can he hit the diving headbutt? Right on the leg of Samoa Joe. Lethal not going for the cover. Trying to get a submission victory here, half crowd. It worked for Brian Danielson before. Samoa Joe needs to reach the ropes to force a break in this hold here. Lethal okay. holding on to the half crowd. Samoa Joe very close to those ropes. Uh, look at that expression of pain on Joe's face, and he does hit the rope. Lethal now, he's going to be wondering what's it going to take. I mean, he's. Talking more trash to Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe just laying on the canvas, can't get back to his feet. One, two, I'm still dumbfounded by why Jay Lethal made this decision. 
Tries to set him in the ropes, but Samoa Joe can't even walk. No, Joe, Joe's in a real bad shape here. Now, hold on, Lethal up and over. Lethal lands a shot. He's going for another springboard drop kick. No, Joe swats him off. Grabs a little German suplex with the release. High impact maneuver from Samoa Joe. He's able to avoid the springboard offense of Jay Lethal and hit a German suplex to follow up. Joe trying to stay in this match despite only having one leg. Oh, there's payback right there. Column slaps or palm strikes. Either one would be acceptable at this point. Looking for the muscle buster. Muscle buster time. Joe's gonna beat No! Can't put or couldn't put the weight on that bad leg. The leg gave out. Dragon suplex!
mopping floors at 7-Eleven. Match. This isn't hold for hold, move for move action. No game of human chess. This is going to be a fight. This is going to be brutal. Without a doubt. Jim Cornette warning everyone, the thugs, Colt Cabana, everybody, stay out of this match. They, he instructed referee Mike Keener to let everything go in this match. However, no outside interference. Jim Cornette, the commissioner, wants them to settle this match one on one. Settle this issue once and for all. Inside, holding his ground. One last note about Cornette. Oh, oh, spit right in the face. Uh, right in the eye, too, of homicide. One last thing I was going to say about Cornette is that he did his instruct that if anyone interferes, they will be fined heavily. Again, trying to go for the shoulder tackle. Slap oh. right across the face and maybe going to take the hearing out of the other ear of Steve Green. I do believe that that might be the bad ear of Carino. Of course, it was a slap at Bitter Friends, Stiffer Enemies that ended Steve, corruption Steve Carino's eardrum. And he can no longer hear out of that ear. Form exchange between these two men. Either man going down. Carino with a series. Homicide firing back with several of his own. Off the ropes comes Homicide. Homicide, of course, in that feud against Cole Cabana, but that's taking a pause for Steve Carino here as there's a shining wizard. Up to the floor goes Carino. Brown Homicide. Dangerous! All the way down to the hardwood floor. He just sailed over Steve Carino and landed all his body weight on his shoulder. Putting his body on the line to do damage to Steve Carino here tonight. Now they're duking it out on the floor. Back toward the entrance. And look, what? 
Who's that? I think I know who that is. It looks like it looks like Cabana, but whoever it is has got his, his face covered up. Like you said, there will be fines issued if there's any interference. Oh, that, he just assaulted Julia Smokes with a steel pipe. It, it's, well, I guess nobody can prove who it was, right? Is that maybe it's a person who took out Nancy Carrigan? Oh, come on. And, and Smokes is in a lot of pain. That steel pipe was connected right on the knee of Julia Smokes several times from that, that mass assailant. We've seen a lot of dirty tactics between Homicide and Cabana, and that might have been the next one, including Homicide. Oh, my God, look at him. What? He really screwed up that shoulder. He put his body on the line and hit that dive to the floor, but like we said, it, you call it high risk because you do put your own body in jeopardy trying to do damage to your opponent. And even though he did take Carino down, he injured himself in the process. I think Carino realizes that, and he's going to go to work on that shoulder. Oh, that shoulder has to be dislocated. That bone sticking up almost through the skin of Homicide's shoulder. Just pounding away on Homicide. Even this fight on the floor. Homicide firing right back. Oh, that's just like the slap that took Carino's hearing again. Hard slap. And, and Homicide trying to buy himself some time. That shoulder is, is really messed up. Of course, these two cross paths in recent weeks at Enter the Dragon in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, it was Cabana bringing Carino back to ROH to tag with him at Enter the Dragon against Homicide Loki. And it was Cabana that caused Carino to pin Homicide. You see Homicide grasping that shoulder. Oh, that shoulder has to be dislocated. In fact, Mike Keener wanna, might want to think about stopping this match right now. I'm Me surprised too. Homicide didn't just stay down there. Well, we want to see who's going to come up the winner of this chapter of the war between these two. And we got a barbed wire chair in the ring. I want to see ref stoppage uh, putting an end to this one. Uh, we haven't seen barbed wire in ROH in a long, long time. And a chain as well. <laughs> but we've seen a lot between these two. Barbed wire has been a fixture in the feud between Carino and Homicide. He's going to handcuff him to the ropes uh, so that Homicide has nowhere to go. Firing back on Carino, grabbing hold of that ear. Oh, that bone just jutting out in that shoulder. And nothing behind that from Homicide. It's, it's, he, he has no, that arm is useless to him. Who says he's got the ghetto for His right arm. Dish out the punishment here, but the fork certainly can. Oh, and the barbed wire right into the face. Oh, that's absolutely shredding the skin of Steve Carino. And he's got that fork. He might have only one arm to deal with with that injury, but he has that fork, and he certainly knows how to put it to use. And that, I think that barbed wire might have connected with the ear of Carino. What's he doing with the fork? Absolutely ruthless. 
You are looking into the eyes of a killer right now. No matter how much pain Homicide is feeling right now, he's staying focused and he's he's concentrated on dishing out the punishment to Carino, and now he's got those handcuffs. Oh, it's, it's like that pain has, has put Homicide into some kind of a zone. I mean, I can't even imagine how much pain he has to be in wrestling in a match with his shoulder most likely dislocated, the bone sticking up in that shoulder. Reno not able to put the handcuffs to use earlier, but now Homicide has him in perfect position to launch the chair right at the side of the head. And now you see maybe that adrenaline wearing off a little bit as, as Homicide just, just kneeling down in pain, grimacing in pain. Trying to not let it phase him. He's doing his best right, he's, to he's stay on his opponent here, but we are seeing an absolutely unbelievable effort right now by Homicide. Got that fork again. Oh no. How much more? Oh, he's stabbing that ear again. Oh, this is just plain sick. A smile on the face of Homicide tells the whole story. He loves dishing out the punishment to Karina. Oh, he is in a zone. Now look at that, he can't even punch, and Karina saves himself with that chair. A little bit of payback, launches the chair at Homicide's head. I, I never thought I'd be happy to see Steve Carino saving himself, but he just did right that. Back to his feet. He's got Homicide down. Both these men putting on an, an absolutely unbelievable effort. And this is what these two individuals bring out in each other. This is how much they hate each other. You notice as he sent him into the turnbuckle and the rope there, it was shoulder first, and now he's stomping away on that shoulder. Oh, he just nailed that shoulder. And now Carino going after the ear of Homicide. I still can't play. I mean, look at that visual, that bone sticking up in the shoulder. Look at that visual of the ear with blood pouring out of it on Carino. So okay. much hatred between these two. Uh, this has just gone too far, Dave Frazak. Mike Keener letting it go. That's what Commissioner Jim Cornette wanted. No Julius Smokes at ringside, taken to the back. We don't know who that masked man was. It's what's this, a pound driver through a table. Can he get it? Homicide trying to block. Trying to use his leverage to block, and he does. He can't even put. Oh! Homicide hits the ace crusher off the apron through the table, and you can tell he's still favoring that shoulder. But look, Carino's out. How much damage did that do to Homicide, too? Both men laying on the floor here in Manhattan, having yet another war here in our wake between one another. I didn't think anything could top the brutality that we saw in 2003 between these two. But I've never seen anything like this in my life. Homicide looking under the ring for more weapons. And you see that, that arm just hanging limply. Homicide trying to get some motion going. He's got a chair. Another chair holds that into the ring. Whatever he can get his hands on, he's going to put to use against Carino. You know, if Carino wasn't already deaf in that ear, Homicide probably would have, he probably would be now after this match, after getting stabbed in the ear by the fork. And what's this now? I don't even see how Homicide cannot use that other arm to lift at all. Headbutt. Now normally he would punch there or chop, but he cannot use that arm. He tried earlier, immediately after the injury, and was not able to put any force behind any offense using that arm. So now he's using the fork, biting away at the ear, using the headbutt. Uh, look at all the blood streaming from the ear of Steve Carino. Again, launching the chair at the head of the notorious 187. <laughs> This, Carino pitches another chair into the ring. This is like a pit fight. This isn't about pro wrestling at all. It's Carino now getting help from his ring announcer, Brian Regal. Getting that, that steel object into the ring. Mike Keener just watching. 
And you gotta wonder what's it gonna take for one of these individuals to win this match after everything that we've seen so far. Homicide putting on one of the, the damnedest efforts I've ever seen in my life with one arm with that shoulder just out of its socket, out of place. Steve Carino getting that ear shredded. An average wrestler after suffering an injury to the shoulder like Homicide has wouldn't even continue the match. Go back to the locker room. You know, but Homicide is continuing to fight here. I think if these two were against anybody else that they wouldn't continue the match. But they hate each other so much that they are willing to endure this kind of pain, this kind of sacrifice in order to defeat the other man. Carino trying to construct a fort of sorts using that sign as well as a series of chairs. I mean, I mean, when you look at it, these two have basically waited since Thanksgiving weekend 2003 to have this match. Two years. And now Carino oh, with that fork. He just stabbed him right in the forehead. He might have been going for the eye there. Well, homicide back inside the ring. Carino climbing up top. Homicide now bleeding from the forehead. He's got Carino. him right down onto that sign. Carino lady neck first. Both men are down. Both men have endured a lot of punishment in this match. The blood loss for Carino. The shoulder injury to Homicide. And Homicide now bleeding from the forehead. Cover! Carino kicks out. Oh, uh, I would hate to be either of these two individuals when the adrenaline wears off. I mean, I, can you imagine how much pain that they're fighting through right now? Homicide grabbing that barbed wire chair. What's he gonna do? I, I don't think he could even lift that chair up over his head. And no. It, Everybody, Gary, Michael Capetta. We're in New York City. It's intermission time, and as we speak, they're setting up the giant steel cage for the warfare match. It's coming up next. Right now, I've got. I must say, you're looking lovely tonight. Lacey is with us, and my question is, where are Lacey's angels? 
Well, Gary Michael Capetta, Lacey's Angels are on a huge winning streak right now. BJ Whitmer, Jimmy Jacobs, both of them, they've been doing so great. They've really been listening to me, paying attention to what I've been telling them. They deserve a break tonight. But when we come back, my eyes are set on that Ring of Honor world title. It's going to take a woman to lead these men to the top. Very strong words from Lacey. But ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going back to the ring. It's time for Steel Cage Warfare. Here we go in Manhattan. Let's go to the ring. Vendetta about a month ago. 
Jimmy Ray wants no part of this match, trying every which way to escape the cage and run away from the fight here. He doesn't like this match just as much as he doesn't like the toilet paper being thrown in his general direction. Well, there is so much history in this one that we wouldn't even bother to b-roll any clips or make any videos just because there's no way we could do it just because so much has happened between Generation X and the Embassy. So many individual uh, issues in this one as well, including Roderick Strong and Jimmy Rave, of course, Jimmy Rave giving Roderick Strong's new girlfriend, Jade Chung, the pedigree a month ago in Chicago, and the pedigree was done in the parking lot, shattering Jade Chung's face. Austin Aries, the leader of Generation Next, who gets taken it to Jimmy Rave. We've seen these two battle and tag team matches in singles matches throughout recent months. Now they're gonna settle it. Jimmy Ray, again, just trying to get away from the front fight, trying to get away from Austin Aries, unleashing punishment here, trying to step over the barricade and a headbutt from Aries. Aries taking it to Jimmy Rave. We saw Jimmy Rave hit Austin Aries with that chair. Survival of fist. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna spend the whole match talking about the history because that's exactly what I'll be doing for the whole match. Basically, these two teams hate each other. A lot has happened over the last year, particularly the last six months, and now they're gonna settle it right here in Steel Cage Warfare. And the Embassy getting that win in the eight-man tag in Chicago as a result of Prince Nana throwing his money around and uh, trying to play some mind games with the newest member of Generation Next, Matt Seidel, paying off Daisy Hayes to turn on Generation Next and cost that the Generation Next team the victory that night. So in five, less than five minutes time, the embassy will get to send another person into the cage. Then five minutes after that, Generation X will even the odds. What does Aries have in mind here? He's got Jimmy Ray straddling that top rope and comes soaring with the elbow. Jimmy Rave greeted by a whole bunch of toilet paper on his way to the ring, and now he's getting greeted by a bunch of fifth from Austin Aries. It's been all Austin Aries so far in this matchup. Austin Aries taking it to Jimmy Rave. Just pounding away on the head, repeatedly. Rave trying to crawl toward the ropes. There's nowhere he can go. Just like when he was locked in the cage with CM Punk just a few months ago. Now it's the same gear that it's going to be several men in there with him and the rest of the MC. Oh, I thought Jimmy Rave was going to taste the steel. Put on the brakes. He pounds away on Aries. That cage is there for these men to use as weapon, as a weapon. As Austin Aries sent across the ring, reverses the Irish whip. Jimmy Raven in the buckle, back body drop. Up and over, we have two teams of four. This one just getting started. It should be noted, pinfalls or submissions can't happen anytime in this match. Aries asking if he should throw mercy on Jimmy Ray. Aries like, no. Just stomp away on his chest. And it looks like the fans did not change their minds. Just continuing to stomp away. As I was saying before, pinfall or submissions can happen anytime in this match. Eliminations can happen anytime, but they must happen inside the confines of that steel cage. There he's with Jimmy Ray back to the corner once again, leading away on the arm. And in order for a team to win this, they must eliminate all members of the opposing team. Austin Aries has the momentum on his side, comes charging, but Ray moves out of the way. Back chop. Some interesting things can happen if Aries is able to eliminate Jimmy Rave right here. Whoever is in next for the embassy, that will take away the embassy's advantage because Jimmy Rave will be out. He'll throw followed up by the knee drop twice. In fact, Aries, he knows that he will be at a disadvantage in less than a minute. He better start trying to get some pinfalls on Jimmy Rave here and get him out of this match. He's going to be at a two-on-one disadvantage very shortly. And then if the embassy members clean Austin Aries, whoever enters next from Generation Next is still going to be at a two-on-one disadvantage. Ten, Eliminations can happen any time. In order eight, to win, you must eliminate seven, everyone six, on the opposing team. Five, four, He's driving three, the face of two, Jimmy Rave into the turnbuckle repeatedly. Alex. And here comes Alex Shelley. Mocking Generation Next, wearing that Generation Next shirt, the former leader of Generation Next. And gets met with the drop kick and sent right into the barricade before he can even enter the cage. Very smart wrestling from Austin Aries, not giving Alex Shelley a chance to get a jump on him. 
And it was Austin Aries who turned on Alex Shelley one year ago, almost a year ago, at final battle. Food in the Mount of Generation Next, and that's when Austin Aries assumed leadership of Generation Next. That body drop for Shelley. Shelley tried a multitude of partners against Generation Next, and finally he joined the embassy at the homecoming in July. And finally he had some friends here in ROH. Shelly firing back on Aries before he can put the steel chair to use. Chin breaker. Aries doing a good job maintaining control. He was fortunate enough to hurt Jimmy Rave in that first segment. And now Rave fighting back, having time to recuperate. Well, Aries had his hands full with Alex Shelly. Well, the question is, how long can Austin Aries fight off two men and keep an advantage? Well, if Rave and Shelly are able to get the pinfall in, whoever is next for Generation Next will be at a, at a disadvantage. Otherwise, the Generation Next member will even go score. And if Aries is able to score a pin here or a submission, then Generation Next will have the advantage in the next five minutes. Springboard elbow connects on both of his opponents, setting them both down. Nicely done. Race first into the cage goes Jimmy Ray. And Shelly as well. Shelly begging for mercy. And Aries knows he's got him here. Scoops him up, plants him with a body slam. Takes his attention to Jimmy Rave now. And Austin Aries showing why he is the leader of Generation Next. Billy Rowe right on top of Alex Shelley. Perhaps he's looking for a full 50 here. He could finish off a member of the embassy. On both. Coming up top, Austin Aries to the top rope, but Jimmy Rave back to his feet. The wrist did not pay off. Big slam off the top. Shelly back up himself, now they're both waiting. Nice double team work by the Embassy. Oh, they just wiped him out. Shelly and Rave have made a great tag team. And right now they have, uh, they're just toying with Austin Aries. And this is payback right here for Alex Shelly. He's waited a long time to do this. He wants to embarrass Austin Aries. Picking him back up, snap air. Takes him down to the canvas and just stomping away. Shelly now, breaking the bottom of his boots across the eyes. Uh, Jimmy Rave just pummeling the face of Austin Aries. Close fist, but hey, anything goes in the cage here. That's right, Todd Sinclair is only in there to see if someone wants to give it up or count the pinfall. Double clutch cinched in by Jimmy Rave, setting up Alex Shelley. Yes, and there's Shelley pulling back on Jimmy Rave. Giving adding, more leverage. Yes, adding to the pressure on Austin Aries. Is Aries going to give it up? Aries is in line. Look at that. Jimmy Rave sticking his fingers in the nose of Aries. Back to the camel clutch. Shelley off the ropes. Drop kick right to the face. The embassy in control. Rave goes for the cover. Shelly tries to give him some assist. But Aries able to kick out twice. They can't keep him down. A generation, or excuse me, the embassy trying their hardest to get Austin Aries out of there. Aries showing a lot of heart. You gotta wonder who it's gonna One be minute. next. So the next part, this for is generation next. The a lot of different strategies. They could go for the power of Roderick Strong or perhaps for the high flyers, Jack Show Evans or Matt Seidel. Well, Aries knows that he can't be eliminated at this point in the match because then it would be a two-on-one for the next member of his team. He needs to even the odds here. He needs to stay in that match until the next man enters, so it's even, two-on-two. Two. Yeah, but, I mean, he is taking a lot of punishment here. He might not be in any kind of shape to even help out whoever the next member of Generation Next is. Jimmy Rave slowly, methodically picking up Aries. He's driven headfirst into the steel himself. Jimmy Rave using the cage as a weapon. And now we got another double pinfall attempt and no. Both men, even with the leverage from both of them going for the cover, can't keep Austin Aries down. And who's next? Seven, six. We got Matt Seidel. 
the newest member of Generation Next. Matt Seidel earned his place in Generation Next at the Redemption Show. I hope in Generation Next the PTM is in a six man. You got a fresh Matt Seidel going to work on both Jimmy Ray and Alex Shelley all by himself, trying to give his partner some time to regroup in the corner. And Seidel wants to use his high flying ability. He's one of the best flyers in the business today. That's what makes Generation X such a dynamic unit. Soars, oh, he avoided the needs of Shelly. Drop toehold and drives the midsection of Jimmy Rave across the knees. Moonsault takes out both men, cover. Oh, only two. Matt Seidel and Jack Evans, two excellent high flyers, two daredevils. Matt Seidel has had so many problems with the embassy. We heard him talk about it in a promo earlier tonight. Thought he was going to be part of a new tag team, the Air Devils, and ended up getting a rave clash. Working over Jimmy Ray in the corner now, kicking away. And right now it's Generation Next in control, and I don't think there's much doubt about who the next man in for the embassy is going to be. There ain't gonna be Prince Nana. <laughs> no, they're gonna wait until the last minute possible to bring Nana into the action. Nice knee strike in the corner from that side out. There he follows up in the forearm on Shelly. And it's Generation X in control. Austin Aries, what an effort so far in this one. He's taking a hell of a beating. He's still fighting here. Got a second win, do -si do and both men connect. Some very explosive offense. And Shelly is out. Cover. Double cover attempt. No. And with the monster abyss looming on the horizon, Generation X needs to get one or, one or both of these embassy members out. Abyss, the largest man in this matchup, the most intimidating force that will be inside the cage. And if things stay even now, that'll be a huge advantage for the embassy in the next segment. Looks like Aries and Matt Seidel talking a little bit of strategy here as they've got Shelly down. And now, Jimmy Rave, vertical suplex. And Jimmy Rave is taking a lot of punishment in this one. What, what are they doing here? We've got something in mind. Trapping the legs around the head of Alex Shelley. That side down, and Austin Airy stretching out double bow and arrow. And there's the innovation we've come to expect from Generation Next. Can they get a submission here? Jimmy Rave trying to grab the ropes. It's not going to do him any good in a match like this. And Seidel and Aries could not hold the, the move anymore. And it did do some damage, though. An inflicted punishment took a lot out of both Jimmy Rave and Alex Shelley. But the clock is ticking until Abyss comes into the ring. Time is running out for Generation Next. The monster is on his way. Well, if they can wear Alex Shelley and Jimmy Rave down, maybe eliminate one of them. Gives him a little bit more of, uh, of hope with Abyss coming into the matchup next. There's now Matt Seidel whipping Jimmy Rave into the corner. No, Rave saves himself with a back elbow. Nice head scissors from Matt Seidel. Play Larry. There's that athleticism of Matt Seidel. Cover. Can't eliminate him. You see Austin Aries keeping his eye on the entrance. <laughs> Just waiting for when Abyss will make his way down to the ring. And Jimmy Ray, who has absorbed a lot of punishment, trying to crawl in the cage, grab himself some time for a breather. Matt Seidel having none of it. Goes to the eyes of Seidel. One minute till the next one. Rave and Seidel have met in a couple of memorable singles matches as well. Under a minute until Abyss enters the cage. Face first. And again. Jimmy Ray down on the canvas. And Seidel, again, it's all legal, just choking away at Jimmy Ray with that shirt. He could get a tap here. He could choke the oxygen right out of Jimmy Ray's body. As there you see Austin Aries is tying up Alex Shelley in a submission on the other side. They don't have a lot of time left. Now Matt Seidel trying to use that cage. Stomping away. And you got to give Raven Shelley some credit here. They are hanging on. Jimmy Ray once again driven into the steel, head first. Aries inside out again talking some strategy. Ten, nine, eight, seven. And you and hear the that countdown begins five, until the piss enters eight, the wall. Two, three, four, there he is. 
No surprise that it's not Prince Nana entering next. Oh, what a menacing figure. Such a powerful individual. And there will be nowhere for Generation Next to go once Abyss is inside that cage. Um, Abyss has already sent one of our cameramen to the hospital tonight. He's going to do the same with our ring announcer, Mike G. Side out and Aries trying to fight him off. Well, that's what Aries did successfully to Alex Shelley. Now working here with Abyss. Trying to double team Abyss. They got Abyss reeling. No, Abyss catches him, double choke slam. No, they stop his foot. Jimmy Wave immediately going for the cover after Abyss did the damage. And the tides are turned. Seidel doing his best and failing miserably. Oh, he got absolutely launched by the big man. I'll give Seidel credit for having some jumps there. Covered by Shelly. No, Seidel hanging in there. And this is exactly what Prince Nana pays a fist for. Now the question is, can Raven or Shelly or Abyss finish the job on either Seidel or Aries or both of them? Now we're gonna see Roderick Stronger, Jack Evans in next for Generation Next. Could you imagine if they're at a three-on-one disadvantage? Open hand strike from the monster. And it came in the chest of Seidel. You know, Jimmy Ray with the boot right across the throat of Aries. Again, another open hand strike. Abyss has been simply nothing but a hired henchman in this feud. Well, Everybody in the embassy is a hired henchman. It's all Prince Nana throwing his money around, throwing his influence around. That is true, but with Shelly it is personal, with Raven it is personal. With Abyss, whether it's the way that he defeated Jack Evans back after the Dragon, whether it's his, his influence, his input at Vendetta or Redemption, Abyss has just been an absolute thorn in the side of Generation Next. And who will ever forget him destroying Jack Evans and Enter the Dragon. And right now he's just trying to choke the life out of Matt Seidel. And Shelly, a vicious double stomp on Austin Aries. You fucking suck, Daddy! And talking some trash to an overweight individual in the crowd as Abyss stomps away. Now, of course, with Abyss, you have to watch out for the black hole slam with Alex Shelly. Shell shot. And Jimmy Rave, well, call it whatever you want, greetings from Ghana or whatever, but it's a pedigree. Greetings from Ghana, come on. He just ripped off another finisher. Yep, and he, and he ended Jay Chung's career with a caving in Jay Chung's cheekbone. With that vicious pedigree in Chicago on the concrete. Austin Aries off the ropes, but Abyss, oh, he just launched him head first into the cage. So much power. Absolutely brutal. And what Shelly got a chair. And that could crack the skull of Aston Aries and Seidel into the cage now. The embassy in full control of the match. Who's going to be the next member of Generation Next to enter the fray? Whoever it is is going to be at a huge disadvantage, whether it's Ryder Strong or Jack Evans. And now, what's, what's Alex Shelley doing with, with Austin Aries? He's got that steel chair in perfect position to drive his face repeatedly into the steel. Absolutely brutal. Chair is covered in Austin Aries' blood. Aries busted open. He's out of it. I don't know whether it's getting rammed into the chair all those times. He's going for the cover. Oh, oh, I thought that was it for Aries. Aries somehow kicks out, and now Shelly going nuts trying to open up that cup. Ten, nine, Aries could have been cut eight, from the chair shot from getting his head rammed into the chair. From getting thrown into the steel cage. There's no telling. 
Messiah on the backbreaker. And Strong's got his work cut out for him. Big shot. Chops in the first 30 seconds. Strong turning the tide. Oh, Roderick Strong means business. Oh, he wants Jimmy Rave. Jimmy Rave is the one who put out his girlfriend. Hey, Jimmy, uh, turn around. Oh, he's got some backbreakers for Jimmy Rave. Welcome to Roddy's knee. Chop across the chest. Oh, he wants to make him bleed from the chest, just like he's done to Brian Danielson. Boot to the gut. Waist lock going for the O'Connor roll. Oh! And face first into the cage. He sends Jimmy Ray. Big clothesline. Back, Ronnie! Ronnie going for the cover. And the miss breaks it up. And it's going to be very hard to get a pinfall or submission with so many people to make the save. But we're going to get a choke slam. No, he avoids it. Oh, I thought he had the double knees. Such strength and Roderick was able to hold the miss on his shoulders. But couldn't avoid that. Belly to belly overhead suplex right into the cage. Stops Roderick Strong pretty quickly as Shelly from cover. No. Able to kick out. And Austin Aries is losing a lot of blood right now. And Jimmy Ray is busted open. Black hole slam. There's like three revolutions on that. And that's what Abyss is paid for. Jimmy Ray going for the pedigree now. Reading from Ghana. Pedigree. And he gets it on side out. Oh, well, we have the first elimination. Here in Steel Cage Warfare, Matt Seidel eliminated combination with Black Hole Slam and the pedigree That's by Jimmy Rave. Jimmy Rave continues to lose blood, and you got to give Matt Seidel a lot of credit for the effort in here. And he showed some great athleticism, some great moves, but in the end, that, that black hole slam on the next rotation, and the pedigree greedy from Ghana is just too much. And look how cocky Alex Shelley is. As always. Rave now taking Roderick Strong to the floor. Hard into the steel barricade. The embassy with a big advantage right now, and the next man coming in will be Prince Nana. Oh, like he's going to do a lot of damage. Come on. But I, I can't wait until they get their hands on Prince Nana in this match. You know what? Prince Nana is going to be pretty safe in this match at this point because I'm willing to bet that another member of Generation Next is going to get knocked out of this match. Particularly Austin Aries, who's taking more abuse in that cage and losing blood right now. Yeah, but we still have Jack Evans waiting in the locker room. That's true. Jack Evans is going to have to make a, an impact in a hurry in this match. Again into the steel goes Roderick Strong. <laughs> Jimmy Rave with a, a running knee, driving his knee into the face of Roderick Strong, causing Strong's back of his head to hit that steal. And blood pours down the face of Jimmy Rave. So he can put some of the toilet paper or those tampons to us. And now we got Abyss and Alex Shelley. One minute for the next spot. What can Abyss have in mind? Big avalanche in the corner. And Aries just crumbles to the map. How much punishment can one man take in this match? You know, is Shelly not immediately going for the cover? I think he just wants to unleash more punishment on his former Generation Next teammate. Uh, right now, Rada Sun is bleeding from the forehead, taking it to Jimmy Ray. A match like this takes its toll on everyone involved. Rada Strong and Jimmy Ray both busted open on the floor. Steel chair being put to use by Abyss. Double teaming Austin Aries. He's got nowhere to go. The chair right across his throat. Well, you know Alex Shelley is enjoying this. Alex Shelley has waited one year for this moment. There's the countdown. Four, three, two, well, this is just going to be more bad news for Generation Next. Is that 
ring gear. You have to wrestle tonight, Nana. Oh, look at Nana. He, he couldn't be any happier. Taking his time. How do you like it? How do you like it, huh? Well, this is exactly where Nana wanted to be when he entered this point in the match. This is why he's paying those men so much money. Prince Nana wants the embassy to be the number one faction in ROH. How do you like and while he's dressed for war, Austin Aries just at the mercy of the embassy inside the cage, while Jimmy Ray pounding away on the bloody forehead of Roderick Strong on the floor. And Prince Nana, yeah, it's easy to beat up Austin Aries after a fist now. Chili been working over him. Roderick back inside the cage. Shot with Austin Aries, hung up in the tree, well in the corner. As Prince Nana stops away on the back of water. Uh, he's real good at doing that when someone's down. Big drop kick from Shelly. Uh, look at Shelly, I mean, he is just enjoying this. What are you gonna do? Touch his leg? I don't think so. Talking more trash as he puts the boots to him. Nana gets cheap shots in. Nana's just strutting around that ring. And we see in control, he got a little what's going through Jack Evans' mind, watching the monitor in the locker room. What's his strategy when it's time for him to hit the cage? Well, I got a feeling Roderick Strong and Austin Aries are going to be pretty much useless for the rest of this match. They've taken so much punishment, particularly Aries, who's been in there for the entire match. He's breaking the face across the steel. Abyss just holding Roderick Strong for Prince Nana to pound away. And right now the embassy is trying to prove a point. They are trying to show why they are the dominant faction in all ways. Austin Aries trying to crawl toward the cage doors. Uh, he's smacking him upside the head. That's just an insult. Aries is just going on instinct right now, and Alex Shelley uh, taking full advantage of the situation now, trying to rip the mouth of Austin Aries. Uh, look, Abyss tasting the blood. That is sickening. This is a sick individual in Abyss. Got the legs now, pulling him. Nana. Oh, he's loving every minute of this. Rave stopping away. Nana gets another shot on Aries. Absolutely no mercy here. This is just brutal. And and the embassy, I mean, how long are they gonna do? This is almost like a cat that catches a mouse and just plays with it for a couple hours until it kills it. That's exactly what we're witnessing right here. The Embassy is having fun right now. The Embassy has to realize this is an elimination matchup. When you just start trying to eliminate them rather than just putting the boots to them. Rather than just pounding away trying to bust them further open. Well, Dave, I, I gotta say... It's all about winning the match, right? I gotta say, though, is that right now the Embassy could put away Aries and Strong at any time and they're trying to prove a point. Maybe send a message to the rest of our race right now about how dominant they can be. One minute until the next part we have one minute until Jack Evans enters this ring. Austin Aries face raked across the cage. Uh, this crowd is dying for Jack Evans to get in there. So am I. But how is Evans going to overcome these four? Jack Evans, the smallest oh, competitor. Jay Chung. Jay Chung has come for revenge. Jay Chung took so much abuse from the embassy when she was a part of it. Broke free, only to get taken out by Jimmy Ray. It's gonna keep me down. Oh, it looks like the footstool is coming back to haunt the embassy. Oh, no, they're, they're going to try to 
finish her job right here. He's ordering all the embassy after her. Facing Jade Chung around the cage, but here comes Jack Evans. Yeah, but what's he gonna do against four individuals? The only thing he knows how to do. Jack Evans doing more high flying. What's 
utilized the 630. Oh, Shelly got the knees up. Right in the back of Jack Evans. Took a chance and paid the price. Shelly now looking to capitalize. Places him up top. Shelly to the second row. Has Evans on his shoulders. Jack Evans served to help take Abyss out of the matchup. Helps serve to turn the tide of the match as they had the embassy out on the floor. He did his job in this matchup and put up one hell of a fight. And now it's come down to Austin Aries, to Roderick Strong, doing battle with Jimmy Ray and Alex Shelley. Plus Prince Nana still in the cage. A three on two advantage for the embassy now. And look at Nana, he's smiling. He knows that his guys are in control once again. There's no one coming in. Oh, come on! Jimmy Ray met nothing but the canvas. Alex Shelley connects with the running drop kick to the face. Shelley with the cover on Aries. Able to kick out. So many wars between all four of these individuals. Prince Nana watched them all, antagonized them all. That's exactly what he's doing right now. He's watching. While the other four men in the cage are doing battle. It's not a, doesn't want to get physical himself in there unless he's getting cheap shots in. And look at Nana, now he's begging out of the cage. Exactly, he doesn't want to be a part of this fight. He wants the other members of the embassy to do his dirty work for him. Even yeah. though he's a wrestler in this match. You have Roderick Strong who suffered blood loss. Al Austin Aries suffered blood loss. Jimmy Rave suffered blood loss. Roderick Strong with Jimmy Rave. Now we could be seeing some double team action here. Perhaps a backbreaker, no. Counter the attempt of the half Nelson backbreaker. Roll it from right, feet on the ropes. Not enough. Only two. Big spear. Charging right into the spear. Shelly, super kick. And he's going for the pedigree. No, backdrop. Right into the arms of Shelly. Shot, shot. Oh, that puts them all down. Come on. Roderick Strong makes the save. Brave now. Going for Gonorrhea. Nails it. This could be it. Oh, somehow Aries kicks out. Back and forth. Such punishment these men are withstanding and continuing to fight. Uh, now Nana's deciding that it's safe for him to come into the cage. As soon as he sees that the embassy has a slight advantage. And it looks like he is signaling for the big ass to the face. He's telling his men to set him up. Both members of Generation Next set up for Prince Nana. Look, look at this cocky. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't realize he just connected with both of his own men. <laughs> you fool, Prince Nana, you fool. Generation Next outsmarting the Prince, and Aries and Strong are up. And Prince Nana better turn around because he's got a world of pain coming to him. That's right. That's right. More miscommunication from the embassy. Backbreaker. Strong got his hands on Jimmy Wave. Destroy them with those backbreakers. That's for James Chung. He's got the strong. 
Cage is using the weapon. It can be used to your advantage to pour a swine like Prince Nana. Roderick Strong and Austin Aries now get their hands on Prince Nana. Just pounding away on it. Yeah. And there, do you know that they're going to have fun here? Big running forearm. Handle. Aries and Strong taking it to the leader of the embassy, and there is no one to save Prince Nana. And now they're just having fun with Prince Nana, just like the embassy was earlier in the match. They are pounding his face in. Backbreaker time for Prince Nana. Nails it. Aries coming up top. It could be 450 time. These fans want to see it. Thank you. 